Oh, I'm sorry. What's up, guys? It's Austin from Yu-Gi-Oh! Theory. I'm here today with my friend Aaron and his Monarch deck. Uh, this is the post-August 24th, 2016 ban list domain Monarch deck. Uh, this is a really good deck, really good against pendulums and just about everything that special summons. Uh, he beats me all the time with it, so it's a really good deck, and I'm going to let him tell you guys more about it. Alright guys, so to start it off, we got three Herbuses. Alright. Which, I'm running three of him for a specific reason. That specific reason is, when he is sent from the grave, I can basically bring him back by sending a Monarch Spell Trap card from my deck to the graveyard and add him back to my hand. He has a pretty badass effect when he is Tribute Summoned. When he's tribute summoned, you can send a monarch, or you can send two monarch spell and trap cards either from your deck or from your hand to the grave. When you send them to the grave, you can target either one card on the field, in the graveyard, your opponent's graveyard, or uh, one card from your opponent's hand at random and uh, shuffle it back into their deck. It's really powerful, really good. It's easy to clear off the field. You know, if somebody's got some badass monster on the field, you can just go boom, gone. You know, it's pretty decent. And then you got. You got these guys. The three Heavenly Squires. They're pretty good uh, as far as, you know, trying to get your monsters out. Say you got, you know, a monarch in your hand and, you know, you think, oh, well, he just won a monster. You know, how am I going to pull off a level eight? Well, he has, she has this effect where if you normal summon her or special summon her, you can special summon a monster with 800 attack and 1,000 defense from your uh, deck. And if she's sent from the field of the grave, you can target a banished monarch spell or trap card, add it back to your hand just like that. So what you want to do is when you normal summon her, you uh, the idea is to go for Edo's special summon him from the uh, deck in defense. He has his effect is when he is normal special summon, you can basically uh, tribute. That's basically you tributing right there. He has his effect where if he's brought out, you can normal summon tributing an additional normal summoner set. And, uh, yeah, when he's in the grave, you can banish him. And when you do, you can actually revive your Eda from the grave and special summon it. And therefore, you know, you're causing their chain. Say it's your next turn, you know, you can just banish him, bring her out, bring another one of him out. And there you go. You can tribute again. So now you got two monarchs on the field. Speaking of monarchs, we got, I'm running two regular cases, you know, just, Simple, bring them out, banish the card on the field. Easy, simple. I'm running one ether. You send two, when you bring her out, you send two cards from your uh, deck to the grave. Or, you know, you can do it from your hand just like uh, ether. And uh, you basically special summon a monster with 2400 attack or more and 1000 defense. So you basically special summon a monarch. And when you go to your end phase, or if it's in phase of that turn, because you can do it during your opponent's turn also. When you uh, special summon that monarch, during that end phase, you bring it back to your hand. So basically, if you want a monarch your next turn, you bring her out, bring out the ideal monarch that you want, put it back in your hand, and you're pretty much set for next turn. I'm running one Angmarl, the Fiendish Monarch. His effect is when you tribute summon, you can target a ban or you can target a spell or trap card in your graveyard, any. Banish it and add from your deck this a card with that same name. Say uh, I got an MST, I got in the graveyard. I want another MST. Bring him out. Banish that MST. Bring out another MST to your hand. I'm running one Mega Chaos. Uh, basically, long story short, you can bring him out using a tribute summon. You can tribute him using one tribute summon monster, or you can do it the old-fashioned way, two tributes. His effect is when he's brought out, you can target a card on the field, banish it, and your opponent takes a thousand. If he's treated with a dark monster, you can target two cards on the field. And if you banish a dark monster, you can remove any monster of that name from your opponent's hand, the field, graveyard, deck, and extra deck. So it's pretty good. If you get lucky, you can potentially get rid of six cards if you tried. Then I'm running one Thessalos, the Mega Monarch. He, uh, 
if he's tributed, you can look at your opponent's hand and make him discard uh, a monster card, and they take uh, 200 times their level. And if he's tributed with a fire type monster, then you inflict an extra thousand your opponent. I'm running one Mobius Omega. Uh, bring him out. You can target th up to three spell cards, spell trap cards on the field. Destroy them. And if he's tributed with a water type monster, your opponent cannot activate anything like any spell or trap cards in response to that. So it's pretty good. I, it'd probably work it good against uh, Chain Burn, Paleo's Oaks, and shit like that. Running one Zaborg. He's basically like my extra deck clearer. Uh, you bring him out. You can pop a monster in the field, and if it was a light monster, your opponent removes from his uh, extra deck a uh, number of monsters due to that monster you just blew up times his level. So say I pop like a level 2 on his side, your my opponent gets to pick two monsters from extra deck to get rid of, or if I pop, say I got ether on my side and I pop an ether, I can pick eight cards from his extra deck to uh, destroy, or you can just bring him out, pop him, like use his effect and blow himself up, and he has to get rid of eight cards. So it's pretty good. Running a land robe. You can activate his effect from your hand. Show him to your opponent. Activate his effect. Flip his monster face down. Special summon him in defense. It's pretty good. You know, if he's got something badass on the field, you just go, yeah, no. You can't activate no effect or anything. You can probably do it against uh, Spirit Dragon. And, you know, he's pretty good. He's a good all around card. If he's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can target a monster. Add her attack that was defensive in graveyard, add it back to your hand. I run in three trade in. Scarlet level eight, draw two cards, pretty self explanatory. I'm running three domain. This basically states if I got a tribute summon monster on my side of the field, uh, you cannot special summon from extra. No synchro summon, overlay. Uh, pendulum monsters that are on top of the, your opponent's extra deck can't be pendulum summoned, stuff like that. Uh, if during my battle phase, if I have a, uh, if my opponent's got a monster on the field, and I go to attack, my monsters get an extra 800 attack bonus. I'm running three tenacity, reveal to you a monarch, and I get to add any monarch spell or trap card from my deck to my hand. It's a pretty good card. Two MSTs. One Pathism. Really wish you wouldn't have hit this card on the ban list, but you know, running three, I guess, was kind of a little bit overkill. Basically, what I can do with this card is uh, I can activate it, send one mark spell traffic card from my hand to the grave, draw two cards. Once it's in the grave, I can banish it to uh, pick three cards from my deck, and my opponent has to pick one for me to keep, and the other two get shuffled back in. This is where uh, the Heavenly Squire comes into play. Say I already banished that and I want that card back. It's an easier way to recycle it because when the Heavenly Monarch sent or the Heavenly Squire is sent from the field to grave, I can add it back to my hand and keep replaying it over and over. You can use the draw two cards effect over and over again, but you can't use the banishing effect over and over again. You only do it once per turn. I'm running one Stormforth. Let's me get lets me tribute your monster. Pretty self explanatory there. Run Frost Blast. Uh, basically, this card lets me, if I have a monarch on my side of the field, I can pop a set spell trap, or I can pop, I can destroy a set card on the field. And then once it's in the grave, I can banish another monarch spell trap card with that card and blow up another set card on the field. So it's basically like a twin twisters, if you know, kind of think about it. Running one March of the Monarchs. Basically states my monarchs can't be targeted or uh, destroyed by card effects. I run two monarchs awaken. It's kind of the same thing as monarchs uh, or march of the monarchs, except it's a little bit better. March of the monarchs will be destroyed. Well, this trap card can't. When I activate this trap card, I can uh, target my monarch. It negates its effects, but it doesn't matter. Once I already brought it out and I use its effect, it's pretty much just a you know whatever attack beater. So I can activate this on my Monarch. It can't be affected by any card effects other than that card. So that means like your opponent can't play enemy controller on it. He can't uh, book a moon it, you know, stuff like that. No dark hole, banish it. Yeah, it's a pretty good card. It's like a great shield to it. I'm running two prime. 
the reason I'm running two prime is one of them is for me to recycle. You know, I can recycle uh, my Monarch Spell Trap cards back into my deck draw a card. Or if it's in the grave, I can banish it. I can banish a Spell Trap card from my uh, graveyard and special summon it as a fairy monster with 2400 defense. Pretty good card. I'm running one Monarch's Erupt. This basically negates the effects of any other monsters on the field. That's not a tribute summon monster. During my end phase, if I don't have a tribute summon monster, it gets destroyed. So the goal is keep a monarch on the field at all times once you have this card out. I'm running one Escalation. Let's me tribute summon during my opponent's main phase or battle phase. It's pretty good. So say he's got a monster that's stronger than one of my lower level monarchs. I can just tribute during that battle phase, bring out something a little bit stronger, and hopefully, you know, overpass him. Oh, and, you know, also when I tribute, it, I can bring out like a Chaos and banish his monster during the battle phase. And then I run one Dark Advance. This card states that if I have a, uh, during any player's turn, if I have a monarch in my graveyard, I can activate that trap, add that monster to my hand, and after immediately after that effect resolves, tribute summon it. So it's basically like an escalation, except it just gets right straight to the point. This deck is pretty good. I mean, I wish it wouldn't have got hit by the ban list. See you guys. Uh, thanks for watching. This has been Aaron's deck profile. Um, he does really good with this deck. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Um, there will be like recommended videos right there, and it should be like a subscribe button like right around there where her face is. So yeah, thanks for watching. Peace.